everyone and welcome to my channel my name is Shawnee we are glitzy stitches home DIY if you're new to my channel welcome if you're a returning subscriber welcome hope everyone's having a fantastic day today guys I'm so excited we are going to be participating in the unbereathable challenge it's hosted by my friend c of cj diy it's also hosted excuse me by my friend jackie of crafting in mimi's world and also hosting today is christine of the diy craftaholic let's get crafting and for our first diy today you will need a 14 inch wreath form. I picked this up at the Dollar Tree and I think I've told you guys before the beige color is my favorite. I think it covers better. A jar that was purchased at the Dollar Tree, a little bee that was purchased at the Dollar Tree, and some mesh from Halloween that I purchased at the Dollar Tree as well. I have some of the gold sparkly glue sticks that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to flood some glue right at the bottom of my jar, just like so. Okay, so I've set my jar on the top of something pretty sturdy, guys. And what I'm going to do is I have the lid to the jar. I'm going to set it down below and I have our glue and I'm literally going to let our glue run right off the side of our jar just like so let it run right down however it wants to go it's fine it's great that it's landing on the jar lid that's going to help us in our design so all right we're going to set this aside and let this completely cool our honey jar is cooling what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the mesh now i purchased this at the dollar tree now guys i am not super happy with the quality of this dollar tree mesh but we're going to do the very best that we can with this so what we're going to do is again it was in the halloween section it was not on sale but i'm going to use it so what we're going to do is i'm going to go to one of these ridges okay just like so at are on our wreath the second one up we're going to take a zip tie we're gonna go under this and making sure that we are going under the metal support for the wreath and we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna zip tie this now guys I bought these little zip ties at a store called Menards here in our town, I paid $6 for 600 zip ties. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. I'm not real worried about this showing. Okay. We'll be using a zip tie at the beginning to anchor our wreath and at the end. Okay. Now I'm just going to make my bubbles accordingly. Just to the size that I like them. Okay. about right there is good and what I'm gonna do to secure these bubbles is I have some stems now these aren't Chanel these are the tin stems but I cut them in half and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run them through like so I'm gonna twist it twist it just like this to secure it I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of our Dollar Tree mesh applied with our wire stems and I'll be right back at the end of each of your rolls of the mesh you're gonna to want to secure that with a zip tie rather than a chenille stem this will just ensure a better hold for your mesh so we're going to go ahead, guys, and we're going to apply this right here. Now, this is one roll of the Dollar Tree mesh. Now, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to finish this off, and we'll be right back. I am leaving a bit of a space here, and I'll show you why in just a minute. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use our zip tie to secure here and here. I'm just going to secure those right in the center. Does not have to be perfect. Can be gapped. In fact, it'll be easier to apply what we're going to apply to our wreath with that gap there. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to zip tie this real nice and tight, just like so. Okay, real nice and there we go. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you what we're going to place in the gap that we left here. And I made one of my Shawnee bows. It has the B print on it and of course the daisy print associated with these. So what we're going to do, I'm going to set this aside because I want to go ahead and decorate, but I will have the link to my Shawnee bow in my description box below. All right, and we have our honey all ready to go. And this is the effect I was going for with this honey, making it look like it was pouring. So what we're going to do is we're going to hot glue this to our wreath, right to our wreath with some hot glue. Okay, and if you want to use an E6000 on this as well, that would be awesome. I'm just going to take some of the hot glue here, put it right on the jar, and we want the jar to appear as if it's pouring the honey out. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hot glue it just like so. If you want to use your finger protectors and or your silicone spatula, that would be awesome. I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to place our jar right in between a couple of our bubbles. Here's our Shawnee bow that I made earlier. And I'm just going to fluff that up a little bit more. And guys, what I've done to the back is literally I've taken my alligator tool and I've punched two holes in, ran it behind it so we can attach it to our wreath. So here we go. And here's what I want to do. I want to go ahead. I want to run these through just like so. Nice and tight. I want it straight. Just like this. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tighten this down. And we'll be right back. There we go, guys. We have our beautiful bow attached. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach our B, and we're going to put a B right here on our little jar, and we'll be right back with our final reveal of this beautiful wreath. Okay, friends, and here it is. My husband is claiming this as his favorite I have ever made. I absolutely adore the way this turned out. So much fun to create. And on to DIY number two. And for DIY number two, so excited about this one. Now we are going straight farmhouse with this. First of all, I have this 14 inch round that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to go ahead and at the top of this round, I'm going to use my largest hole punch. And we're going to go ahead, we're going to go right in here, just like so. I want to keep these as even as possible, right across, maybe to about there. There we go. All right, there we go. Now I think that looks good. Now. I have this little piece that I printed off my Cricut and weeded it last night. What I want to do is I want to get this in the center, just like so, and about right there. Yep, yeah, about right there. Come down a little bit, right, just like so. It's all nice and straight. And four my transfer paper guys i use the dollar tree shelf adhesive just the clear and i've used this for years and it works really good for me we're just going to go ahead and we're going to rub our design off right onto our wood round just like so
quick and easy, guys. All right. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start to peel this up, leaving our design on our wood round. If you have any spots that start to come up with your transfer paper, guys, just go ahead and come back down. Run your spatula again, just like so. This is absolutely stunning. And you could actually go back and paint your flowers in if you'd like. Anything like that. With a paint marker, with a permanent marker, with chalk paint. Anything that you desire. I printed these from my Cricut Design Space yesterday. But before I apply these, I purchased this at Hobby Lobby last year and I want this to fit in our design so I'm going to go ahead and I want to move this down just a bit because I want that to stay right in the space and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put our bees right on this side just like this Okay. I'm going to put one here. Let's get this one applied first. Absolutely beautiful. Now for the other one now. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to place our other bee right here. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to place our welcome. Apply a little bit of wood glue first, just in some spots for that lasting hold. Then we're going to put some hot glue on this, just like so. And we're going to place it right on our sign. Perfect. We're going to make a little bow for the top for our little wood round. What I've done is I've simply taken and I've rounded, squinched in the middle like so to form a bow for our little be welcome sign. And that's all I'm going to do for this one, guys. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to put some wood glue on here. We're going to apply some hot glue right to the center. We're going to put that right in the center of our hanger, just like so. That wood glue will be our permanent hold so it doesn't fall off with the elements. And for our third and final DIY, I have this piece of oval wood that I purchased at Menards. And it's about mm, an eighth of an inch thick, I would say. And what we're going to do today is we're going to stencil this. Now, guys, I'm going with a natural wood look today. I think it is so farmhouse. And what we're going to do is I have this little stencil that I do believe I purchased at Hobby Lobby a while ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stencil down like so. I want this bead to look like it's in flight. And this one doesn't stick, so you just have to lay it on there and trust yourself to get it nice and even. I'm going to take some antique wax by Waverly, pat it on a paper towel. And the look I'm going for here is I'm hoping to achieve like a wood burn look. We will see. I'm going to bring this straight up, patting it, bringing it straight up each time, not rubbing it at all, just a straight up motion with 
my brush straight up motion just like so okay let's see what happens perfect all right we're going to do the same thing we're going to tap this in our antique wax we're going to tap it on our paper towel we're going to hold this nice and tight to our surface and we are going to pat up go ahead and we're just going to tap this flower right on here just like so there we go i think that is absolutely adorable you could paint this with color or anything but i actually really enjoy the wood burn look okay guys so i'm going to let this dry and we're going to come back and we're going to put some legs on our little riser go ahead and apply the legs for our riser i'm just going to simply turn it over and i have a little bit of foam here that i put it on for protection I've just taken two tumbling tower blocks and I've glued them together with wood glue. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply a little bit more of the wood glue right here and very little hot glue for that right now hold. Just a wee bit of hot glue and we're going to go ahead and we're going to place our leg right here just like so adding a wee bit of pressure we're going to do the same thing here on the opposite side you want to make sure your legs are turned the same way so they don't look funny a little bit of wood glue a little bit of hot glue there we go and go ahead and apply I'm going to go ahead and get the other legs applied to our riser and we'll be right back. We're going to do a quick recap of our DIYs today. Make sure you go check out CJ, Jackie, and Christine's channels. Again, I'll have the links to those channels in my description box below as well as a link to the playlist. And if you like what you've seen today, go ahead and give me a great big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell next to your subscription and you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. I can also be found on Instagram and Facebook at Glitzy Stitches Home DIY. And stay tuned for an announcement of a new channel I'm creating. Super excited about it, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, here's something else you may like.